Whenever you visit a website or use some kind of application, that website or application needs to pull data from a database. So let's say that I visit cyber.com. When I do that, I'm asking for the homepage of that website. And that homepage is made up of all sorts of data. So Cyber's backend servers go, okay, yeah, here's what the homepage should look like. The overall structure of the page comes from the backend and front end code, but most of the data that you see, like the text, the courses listed, etc., comes from a database. For code to be able to access this data from a database, it has to use some sort of query language. And for many types of relational databases, we can use the Structured Query Language, or SQL for short, also sometimes pronounced SQL. SQL, or SQL, is a language that was designed specifically to interact with database engines. For example, if I want to pull a list of the five latest courses to display on the homepage, my code could use a query that looks a little bit like this. Here, we're selecting the name, description, and banner from the courses table, and then ordering by date that the course was published. And after that, we're limiting the results to five. Sometimes, however, instead of hard coding a query as we see it here, we may need to use dynamic values that we can't predict ahead of time. As an example of this, if we want to give visitors the option to search through a list of courses, we could do that by giving them a search box where they can then type in their search query. And that search query would then get used in an SQL query to search the database. And so here we can see that we're again selecting the name, description, and banner from the courses table, but this time filtering by course names that look like the search query. Taking user submitted data like this is often referred to as user input, user data, or in the cybersecurity world, untrusted inputs. Considering it untrusted is vital for security reasons, and here's why. If we do not treat input as potentially dangerous, then we can leave our database vulnerable due to SQL injections. The reason is that a malicious visitor could end up crafting an attack payload that completely changes the purpose and meaning of our original SQL query. Now, instead of it running a search against our database, an attacker could submit an SQL injection payload into the search query, such as something like this. We have union select the ID, email, and password from the users table, and then we have a dash dash in order to comment out the rest of the query, which would instead turn our SQL query into this. As you can see, this is a totally different query. This would not only return courses from the database, but it would also return IDs, emails, and passwords from the user's table. We've allowed a complete stranger to change what our application is sending to the database, which could allow them to extract data from that database that they should not be able to see, such as passwords, emails, credit cards, etc. And that's how many very expensive data leaks have happened. Or, as I've demonstrated in my courses, it could be used to bypass admin logins entirely. SQL injections can have an extremely high impact if security controls are not properly implemented, and this is just one example of how that could happen. But with that said, if you have the right security controls, you can prevent this type of attack, and that's why if I press enter in my search box here, you'll see that nothing bad happens and that the user input is simply treated as regular text. Now, if you'd like to learn more about SQL injections, such as how to craft payloads and how to find vulnerabilities or how to protect your own code in order to make sure that no one can do this to it, there are plenty of free resources that can help you learn. For example, OWASP has multiple free resources to explain what they are, and they even include resources to explain how to prevent them and how to test for them. I've even created multiple courses on this subject, including both free and paid courses, so feel free to check those out. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please like the video and subscribe for more content just like this. I'm also curious to hear if you're watching this video to learn how to find SQL injections or to learn how to prevent them in your own code. So leave a comment below with your goals. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.